Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. It's going to be the next installment in my series where I take a Hammond AO29 organ amplifier and turn it into a Fender guitar amplifier of some kind. Um, I apologize. I actually did a whole burst of work yesterday and um, kind of forgot to document everything bit by bit. So I apologize if some of it I miss or skip over or don't go into as much detail. But um, yeah, I made some good progress. Um, if I can recall my memory, uh, last time we kind of updated, we were focusing on like deconstructing the chassis and talking about the circuit. And um, I actually am already progressing um, pretty well. So let's talk a little bit about where we've come from. So um, first, let's finish up discussion about the chassis. Um, I continued to tear down and tear out everything. And actually, I went a little bit further and I have actually torn out all the filament wiring and I will redo that and um, let's take a look this is the inside of the chassis as you can see I've kind of got some wiring going already and um, taking out all the filament wirings and then also I decided that uh, I put my V1 tube over here way on the left. That's a 9-pin tube. And then I've got this... There are two other 9-pin sockets here. I'm not going to use this one. This one is going to be my phase inverter and then my two power tubes and my rectifier. And then I took out a slot here and I think what I'm going to do is put in a new 9-pin socket. I'm not going to bother taking this one out and moving it. I'm just going to take a new one. Um, I've got one right here. A brand new 9-pin tube socket and I'll install it in there and then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire up all those sockets and I'll put the heaters in the filaments in but I'm not gonna put any circuitry on that it would be V2 yet I'm just gonna get started um, but you know that's kinda my general layout and then um, just to kinda talk about some of the general practices so I've got my input jack over here close to V1. All the main V1 preamp circuitry will be here. Then we've got our tone stack up here. Most of it point to point. I do have a terminal strip here. And then we've got our phase inverter right here. Our two power tubes and our output section. And so just some general thoughts is you want to have your input jack as far away from the power transformer and the, and the rectifier as possible. You know, the rectifier and the power transformer is sending out a lot of that very noisy um, alternate current, you know, 120 volt alternate current from the wall. You know, it gets stepped up to a very powerful alternating current. Um, we want to keep that as far away from this input section over here. Basically the input side in the V1 is critical for noise because whatever noise is introduced to the circuit here, it gets amplified in every gain stage. And also the signal coming in from a guitar is very weak and so it's very susceptible to hum and buzz and so you want to try to protect it as much as possible so that's kind of the thought process there behind the layout um, again I'm going with point-to-point -point wiring so I'm trying to keep all of my leads as short and close as possible um, then um, yeah let's finish up with the chassis before I really get into the circuit so then uh, I've got my power switch here, my fuse here, my yeah, my fuse here, my uh, indicator lamp here, which is 120 volt, which will just go in line with this power section, and then I will need to get a power cord, which I will figure out. I, I like to do IEC cables, but I may not be able to do that. I don't know if I have one right now in my parts list. Um, so then, yeah, let's finish up with the chassis. So basically, what I did with the chassis. is um, I spent some time kind of cleaning it and sanding it. That was really most of what had happened. Um, I, I took some sandpaper and kind of cleaned off a lot of the grime and rust on the chassis. And I really didn't go tremendous. I, I really mostly did about 60, which you can see there's scratch marks, which I'm kind of okay with. Um, I really didn't want to spend a ton of time getting this to like a really clean glossy finish. I like having a little bit of that patina. And then um, drilled out a lot of these holes with a drill 
And um, the only thought there is to start off with a very narrow pointed bit so you get your center point exact and then slowly step your way up to the larger bits and then eventually I used a, uh, you know, a stepped drill bit to really nail in the exact size but um, all that's going well. Um, then also I decided, you know, in the past a lot of my amps don't really invest a lot in their visual aesthetic appearance. Um, none of my, you know, most of the time I just take a marker and write the controls on there or I don't write anything at all. But I thought I would try um, using, I, I have a, you know, some pine in my shop and I just cut off this very thin veneer and I'm going to experiment with using that as a faceplate. Uh, some of that inspiration came from the train wreck amps. I've been looking at some train wreck circuits, which I'll get more into maybe later. Some of the mods in this amp, but a lot of those use a that kind of a faceplate, which I think looks really cool. So, um, yeah, the chassis came along really nicely, and it looks really good. Um, I, I really am really happy with how it's turned out so far. So, um, yeah, I think everything is pretty much progressing really nicely.